It's hammer time. G'day, you Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, besides having a lot of fun, what we're going to be checking out, this is the Fury B Storm, and now in the past, we've had some great Fury Bs, I'm talking about UX215, and we've also had some ones that <clears throat> caught, on to, caught on fire and burst into flames that were bits of rubbish, so we're talking about the Fire Dancer, but what we've got here, this is the Fury B Stormer, and hopefully it's going to be a good sort of storm, we're going to... It's not it falling apart, that's actually just a loose prop nut that's fallen off. But what this is, this is the bench breakdown. Nonsense aside, this is the bench breakdown where we stick it on the bench, take it apart, and have a look at the techs and specs and you know find out is this gonna be the right budget racer for you? I am very interested in these motors, and uh, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see how this frame sorts to go together. It's a mix between aluminium and carbon, and it does look pretty cool. And if you want to see the part two in the review where we take it out to the field, rip it around, and go check this card out. Up there, that's where we can take it out, hit it with the speed gun, see what the rest of the game thinks about it, and you know, get you some fly footage as well. So, enough rambling here, let's stick the Fury B Stormer on the bench and find out just how this little bad boy is going to go. Alright, let's do it. Alrighty, here it is on the bench. I've taken the props off. I'm going to take the antenna off. That's just a little pagoda one, but it just makes filming this a little bit easier. And first things first, I do have to apologize a little bit to Fury B because I've had this for quite a while. And uh, I just guess I was kind of burnt out on the Fury B drones. They were coming out every single week, and that's probably a good word, good saying. Burnt out after the fire dancer because that thing just burst into flames. And I hope this time we've got another Fury B on the bench. That all right, let's crack it open. Let's see how this one goes because we've had some really good stuff lately. You know, like the Mocha Jardina, I think it's called. We've had the Tiny Drone of the Proton. So we've had some premium frames. It's going to be interesting going back to see what is this for like 178 bucks. How does this budget version go. Anyways, a bit of an overview. What it is, it's a plug and play or buy and fly five inch FPV racer. It's designed to take up to a 6S LiPo, but I really don't think that's gonna be happening. Most of the time I'm gonna recommend the target audience is probably gonna be flying around um, on 4S on this anyway. Uh, it's made up of four individual arms on the bottom. It seems fairly rigid. I do have to say it's got some interesting tech choices in the middle. And really what we're hoping for that this is gonna be a beginner's drone they can get out and have a decent FPV experience. Cause like I said, Fury B, they can be hit and miss. They can be good, but they can also be bad. So first things first, let's stick it on the scales, find out how much it's gonna weigh. Take your bets, I'm gonna say 330. Okay, well, I was a little bit off. 311 grams. So look, it's not, oh, I guess if we put the antenna on, what are we on, 319? Now I've just got to find some props. I've just got some cyclones, because that's what I'm gonna be using. Come on, what to say, 330. Ooh, three, 340. So look, it's not an ultralight or anything like that, but it's also not too heavy whatsoever. So uh, we do have some pretty decent sized motors on here as well, but that's how heavy it is. Put that to the side. Now what we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna zoom in, have a look at some of the components, then talk about the design choices, the quality and the pros and cons, and then some final thoughts. Now just before we zoom in, if we flip it over, you can see how it's made up of four individual arms. Each one of those is four millimeters thick. It does feel like somewhat stiff, but it's hard to tell with how this carbon's gonna go. You sort of get what you pay for, and it definitely looks like it's a little bit of the cheaper carbon. It has been chamfered around the outside, all that sort of stuff, and I can tell that it is real carbon, so that's a, a nice little bonus. They haven't put any fiberglass or anything like that in there, but let's zoom in and probably talk about one of my favorite parts on this build. The bit I am sort of a little bit excited about is these motors. Now these motors here, they're a 2308, so a huge motor that's 2200 kV, so an absolutely huge motor, and you might think, that's where, you know, you might think, oh gee, this might be better on 5S, and you might be good, but I do worry sometimes in the past with the high voltages, those sorts of things, the things why I don't want to put this on 5S because I have real quality issues and quality control issues with the Fury B. I think the more voltage you put into, the more likely you're going to end up in fire. Now, if we follow this along, you can see there's no ESCs on the arm whatsoever because we've got our four and one Biohelly S 35 amp burst ESC in the middle. I guess we'll just have to see how that goes. Hopefully that doesn't burst into flames as well. And then on top of that, we've got something pretty interesting and I'll flash a picture on the screen. It's our F4 flight controller built-in OSD plus a VTX. So uh, look, traditionally, I don't really like my VTX mixed with other parts of the electronics, but I think we'll just have to see how it goes in this case. We've got some little dip switches on the side right here. Not dip switches, I should say, little buttons you can press in and out to change some of the settings on your VTX. It's got different power levels as well, all that sort of jazz. And then on top of that, I've got the FreeSky version. So this should bind straight up to my Tyrannus radio. I'll put some links down below to some different versions 
notifications as well if you're interested. And uh, I do say it's nice that they've got an actual proper receiver in there because in the past, they sort of had some useless things sometimes that were tucked up in the carbon. It looks like they've done the right thing here with uh, we should be getting some better range and no fail safes. Now towards the other side of that FPV action, what we've got on the front, we've actually got a CCD camera. So that's there, that's a 2.5 millimeter lens. I'm a big fan of that. I don't know how the quality is gonna be, but I think the stats sound right. So I like that size of lens and CCD. That seems to be going okay. That's a full size camera. So uh, you do have a little bit more weight there. We are sort of moving towards those micros, but again, for the budget choice, how much can you really complain? Now, some of the other little extras, you saw the Pagoda antenna. I find, uh, I guess that's gonna be okay. It's not gonna be too crash resistant or anything like that. I'd probably prefer a little stubby, but you know, beggars can't be choosers when you're sort of paying for a premium frame. On the back, you've got your buzzer and an LED board there that you can change your colors of and uh, all those little fun, fun things. But, you know, that might not uh, float everybody's boat. Now, I guess what we should move on and talk about is the actual design of the thing. So I do like the way that it's incorporated with aluminium and it's using that with some carbon. I think all the best frames are doing that nowadays. It makes it very, very strong and uh, sort of gives you some great flexibility when you're building your frame or design flexibility anyway. Now, one design feature that kind of I'm a bit on the fence about, you've got this sort of gentle slope, maybe like a 15 degree angle right here that's running across the top of the frame. That can be frustrating, especially when you're trying to put a go GoPro mount on there because look that 15 degrees it's going to add that on and I prefer it either flat or I prefer it built in at like at least 30 35 degrees so you can get some good GoPro action. Now this is the big one for me and that comes down to the quality so Fury B they have really been hit and miss and from experience I'm only going to give it a 6 out of 10 because time will tell how this will go when we're out in the field. The solder joints actually don't look too bad. The quality of the carbon look I have seen worse it doesn't feel absolutely outstanding but it's a pretty cheap model so I'm not going to complain too much it sounds like it can do a lot it's got a lot of the good features that we want and it, hopefully these motors absolutely rip and we'll have to see the quality of the flight footage but i've just had too many things go wrong with fury b in the past i love the x215 like i said and the dark max was okay but things like the fire dancer and some of the others catching on fire well there's just not too much you can say. So time's gonna tell with the quality. At the moment, I'm gonna stamp it with about a six and that could change in the part two review depending on how it goes. That's another reason why you should go watch that part two review as well. So if you wanna get these, make sure you go watch that to find out is this one, is it gonna hold up? Now the pros and the cons, and this is where I guess the biggest con for me is, is just the quality, going back to that. I wanna make sure that it works right and I, at the moment, I just don't have faith until we take it out and fly it around. Now some of the pros, look, I like the look of it. I don't like the props you get with it, but that's no biggie because that's easy to switch out. Uh, and it is cool how it can take a wide range of voltages, but we'll have to find the best voltage for it. I'm gonna suggest for us, but 5S might be okay with these motors as long as the components can take it. And then a big one for a lot of people, a lot of people just want a drone they can take out of the box, bind it to their radio, and it works. That might be the case with this one, you know, and it might be pretty powerful as well. And for the price, it seems to be on the right sort of value for people. I mean, 170 bucks, you can't complain too much, especially when that includes a receiver as well. So I guess in summary, I guess definitely we're gonna need to watch that part two to make our sort of definitive decision and find out, is it a good one or is it a bad one? Is it something, you know, Fury B is a very interesting brand. Some people like them, some people don't like them. Some people think they're great for the value when things work and I can absolutely understand when things go wrong. And something I wanna to mention too, sometimes I find it hard as a reviewer, like I've done some of these and then people email me about their Fury Bs and they've changed the products of the product or the internals a little bit later. So uh, if you email me in a couple of months and you say, Stuart, this has a different flight controller than the one you reviewed, yeah, sometimes they do that. It's very hard to review something trying to predict what they're gonna do in the future. But in this case, we're just gonna test it on what's on the bench and how this actual unit goes out in the field. Alrighty, so there it is. Uh, there's my review of the Fury B Stormer. And overall, it's really hard to tell. Like, they're doing something okay. And I guess for the price and the budget, look, you can't really complain too much but there's been too much hit and miss that we've had with Fury B in the past. So we need to go and watch that part two to find out, is this thing gonna work? I'm very interested in the motors and especially I think, is it gonna have the power that's got there? Cause they do look very cool and they feel quite nice as well, but time will tell. And uh, I think it's gonna hold up okay in crashes, but, and it looks great. Like it looks really good in the terms of the quality and all those sorts of things, it looks good. But the problem is, I know Fury B products too well. I've seen too many of them and the proof has to be in the pudding. So at least they've got a real receiver in this one, but I want to test it in the field, which is why that's important that we watch that part two video and we see what the other boys think and hopefully look, it works. 
and uh, fingers crossed that we might have a great budget race that's going to help a lot of people. But uh, we just got to wait and see because I don't want to have something that's going to burst into flames. That's the last thing that we want. Anyway, what do you guys think? Drop your comments down below. Subscribe for more FPV related content. And as always, happy flying. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.